<laughs> before and after. No, I had heard she uh, I had heard she caught cancer. Caught it. <laughs> Got a case of the cancer. Oh, I want to wear the headsets today. By the way. All right. Maybe. What you don't trust? You don't trust me to wear the headsets. I don't trust you to set it up. Once I set it up, I'll give you the headsets. I can give then you, you the can thumbs listen. up or thumbs down. Like you're like, hey, how's my mic? I go yeah, up or down. <laughs> I can't hear. Yeah, I'm aware. You, how long you been? How long you been um, a DJ? Uh, a year. <laughs> no, you've been a co-host of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the first one to tell you that is not the same thing. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. I'm glad he's got a friend that has a podcast. Can my gladiator name be Blaze? Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. It's so dark out here. I don't know where I'm at. Two guys, one podcast. Joined this week by our musical friend, Adam Dale, ladies and gentlemen. What? I went bald. My genetics dictated that I liked this particular musical group. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Well, you sound good though. Hey, right? hold on. And my thanks, by the way. But in my defense, I did go to school for theater, and some of the fucking classes I took were sound design. That's true. That's very true. Adam, check, check. My mom actually brags on you quite often. Me? Yeah. She's like, why? You know, was doing the acting thing for a little while, and, <laughs> and I told him, I was like, well, then do an impression of Adam, and he just dropped right into an impression of Adam. He just did you, and he nailed it. I was like, how do you nail? <laughs> Adam, I was like, I guess maybe I have some affectations. I don't know. Hey, we, yeah, uh, here's the deal, man. So we work together, and some of the people that would come in would confuse us all the time. I still get that. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. They would always come. They think we're brothers. They, they do. They yeah. do. They would, yeah. they Never would. mind that he's a foot and a half taller than you yeah. are. Yeah, and that we're. I mean, like yeah. as as. As short as I look standing next to you, you look standing next to him. <laughs> Dude, I'm pulling this because I need some motherfucking I was slack. trying to give you some. That's what I was looking at. I was, I was, <laughs> I was not. I didn't realize like that, what you were doing. This was like, sn- stop messing with the things. This is like that Snickers commercial or the dude <laughs> becoming a diva. Yes. <laughs> give him the fucking headsets and everything changes. Dude, He'll be asking for editorial critiques next. He'd be like, I have some notes. <laughs> Some notes. You, you want to know what my favorite thing to do was whenever people would come in and think I was you? Because they'd all ask, they'd all ask the same thing. So how's the uh, how's the music going, man? <laughs> and every time, I'd be like, I gave that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Nah, man, you're you're pretty good. I thought you could go some places. And I decided to be real with myself, man. Like, I wasn't making I wasn't making as yeah. much money as I was spending on heroin. <laughs> Develop some really bad habits. And everybody was always so bummed out. <laughs> all all the smack and STDs finally caught up to me. Yeah, my body yeah, is just yeah. riddled with chlamydia. <laughs> Syphilis is just taking over my brain. I can't write music anymore. <laughs> <laughs> man, man they, there's people out there that think that you don't play music anymore just because of me, and they're pissed. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, pull the pull the mic up a little bit for you. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. You were yeah, just there. You go. You, you want to mouth settle down, that motherfucker. Um, first off, though, I want to go back to uh, your mother saying that, yeah, that he that was so good at acting. You know, he did the acting for a while. I love people who don't know anything about show business, assuming that if you're any part of it, you should be able to do is, all part yes, of it. All so, of it. no, if, if you are you if you come home and you say, Mom, I'm, I'm a theater major, I'm going to focus on set design. And they're like, really? Do an impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say something funny for me. Why don't you? Um, I... I this is something that I encountered the entire time that I was a theater major. It's not the reason why um, I I didn't finish my theater degree. That was just because I was lazy, but it was like my least favorite thing. That everyone assumes that you know how to do everything. Well, I have this. Uh, I, I like that people can assume that w- what you do um, is kind of easy. And I have this. Yes. Uh, and I mean, it, it, I wrote a song once, Adam. Well, it's easy for some people. <laughs> like you know, like broadcasting is easy for some people. You know what I mean? And other things are easy for other people. Basketball so. is easy for LeBron James. Exactly. That's my point. Yeah. But I have a. That's a. Uh, I probably shouldn't even be talking about this. But fuck it. She's uh, <laughs> she's an artist. You know, she's been like in art school. You know, she's got her degree in like art. a painter. She, yeah, painter, okay. painter. She, yeah, she's a yeah. She paints and. And what does she use? Watercolors, oil oils. based, all does right. all that. Yeah, she does it all. I mean, she's good. But <clears throat> graduates, um, decides she doesn't want to do anything with art because it involves teaching, right? And, and it's also commercial, like selling out, man, selling out to the man. And so now, here's what I understand. Yeah, uh, 
even people who are in theater, people who are in the arts, if you go to school for it, you got four goddamn years to figure that out. Yeah. Why, why does it take graduating to be like, I don't want to do that. Selling out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Like, what never, did you think was going to happen? You, you never noticed all of those people that had graduated that were coming back as alumni? They all had shitty jobs. Uh, they all had shitty yeah. jobs, mostly not related to their field. I'm I mean, not. not all of them. Look, there are success stories, and there, there are ways. You can be a working artist. You are a working artist. I am a working artist. This is not... Radio is not what I went to school for. Yeah, you didn't end up in the arts. I'm not a working artist. There are there are ways though to maintain a love. You are though, and you've talked about it a lot. You are a um, a patron of the arts. Like that's the way. Like you you learned how to really and truthfully enjoy and appreciate the arts, and you do a great job of that. And you make a little money, so now you toss a little money back oh, yeah, the yeah. artist's way. Yeah. Like, and that's a good, that's fine. That's a fine way to be. At some point, you have to just realize your limitations. And I, I you know, as a, as a musician, I never actually thought I would be sitting in a bar playing Oasis songs to drunk people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not how I thought I was going to make money. My limitation but. is obviously my Adam Dell impression to his mother. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, well that, she did everybody else, but for her, it's perfect. Oh, it was it's probably perfect. like all your other imperson, <laughs> impersonations. It's very good physically. physically if you're watching yes. it, it's if great. You're watching, yeah. yeah. And see, the deal with <laughs> decided one day she's very uh, flighty. Like, I think I'm gonna cook. I think I'm gonna start a restaurant. I cook really well. The artist? Yeah. Well, then one day she came in. Hey, hey, and she hey wants, they are the culinary arts, man. <laughs> well, yeah. it's not too far afield. Well, she decided she wants to sing. Oh, God. and she was singing to me and she would sing a lot <laughs> but you okay okay now you know do you know those people that with the 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 overly confident people where they 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 go okay like i know that guy's good because he told me he is yes so you, the guy that will come to you and she's kind of like that she'll come in and she'll say um i was at work today and i was singing and my co-workers jaws like hit the floor they were like oh my god you are so good she decides she's going to try out for The Voice. Oh, yes. She, does she? She fucking made it. She made it. No. Yeah. Who? No, it was this, you... this new season. Oh, the no newest fucking one. way. Yeah. Well, good luck and best wishes to her. It occurs to me we're eight minutes in and we haven't introduced uh, the show or ourselves. <laughs> Hold on. Has that made you want to? Have you been like, because, you know, those, those cats get some serious publicity, man. I don't even care. I don't like. I'm not even mad at her. Like that's her thing. If she feels like she wants to do that, that is no. But you have nothing in you to be like, man. I want to get. I just want to show. I just no. there's some, because I remember in uh, in high school, like you had to go to these little seminars about like what to do after high school, and one oh of them was like Dervry. Oh God! And the lady said, "What are you going to do in ten years?" And you told her, "I'm going to be a fucking rock star. I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to make money." Yeah, and yeah, she, said, said, she said, "No, you're not." And she's like, <laughs> "She's like, you're not going to be making more than a hundred thousand dollars a year." I was like, "We'll see." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she said, no, you're not. That's why you need to go to DeVry. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go to DeVry. <laughs> I remember that. Holy crap. Yeah, that's what being a cocky teenager will get yeah. you. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to be fucking famous. <laughs> fucking famous, bro. At the same time, though, uh, there's very little chance that lady is still at DeVry, That's too. true. Uh, I mean, is DeVry even still open? I don't, I don't, you don't hear them. They're, it's Everything's University of Univer Phoenix. Yeah, now. I was going to say University of Phoenix. Kinda. They pretty much run everybody else yeah. out of the business. Yeah. <laughs> well, they they put university in their name. They were the first ones ballsy enough to do it, right? Yeah. Like everybody else was all just DeVry Technical Institute or whatever. Yeah, they no, 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 no. We are university. Mm -hmm. That's all the difference that mattered. Um, hey, uh, you're listening to Two Guys One Podcast. This will all be edited, so it won't sound like this. <laughs> it won't just be a whole bunch of me bashing. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, that'll be in there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast joined this week by our musical friend, Adam <laughs> Dale, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Yes, Adam Dale, he of the iTunes fame. Uh, yeah, he, I invented iTunes. He of the, he, that's right. That's <laughs> you, right. You just YouTube famous. <laughs> I, told, I, told that, I told that bitch in DeVry. <laughs> told you I was going to do something in my life. I uh, I'm seriously. You should. You should. If you don't know the name, uh, then shame on you. You do know the voice probably, and you definitely know some of the songs. We played a bunch of them um, featured here on the show over the past uh, year or so. I've become a big fan. Uh, you grew up with um, other guy. I did. I'm very very sorry for you. <laughs> we had a blast. <laughs> we, were, we were neighbors not once, my friend, but twice. Twice. I actually drove by there earlier today because I ate, ate ate lunch with a friend of ours and uh, drove through our hometown. And yeah. drove past the old Buchanan Street. Oh yeah, that was the second time. That was the second time. Second neighbors. 
Mm, second time around, man. Look at that, man. I see fate. Fate has brought you together. It's serendipitous. And it only took like some severe scheduling on <laughs> our part to get you into the studio. Mine too. I'm hardly ever over this way anymore. Um, we as you you heard there, you've you've got a um. That's about to make it onto the voice. Yes. So maybe that this famous thing is finally going to pay oh off for you. Oh my god! Yeah, she can she can introduce me. You can bank on her, man. Not and if get she's your as bad as she says she she's is. not bad. I mean, look, uh, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the pitch, the pitch thing. Uh, she's she's a little fine on timing. Timing you can't teach someone, and uh, we'll just you know, oh, she's gonna go out there. She's gonna give 110. percent She's gonna. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is the voice. The voice, like all the other shows. They've, they've got some good singers and they've got some not so good singers. There's a reason why they put that shit on TV. It's, it's some hey, of it's for the drama. Yeah. That's the wife's favorite show. Look, I don't understand. And the thing is, the voice has a they have a pretty good history of people from Louisiana getting on the show, man. Look, really? There's, yes. There's a, there's a funny thing. I I actually tried out for American Idol. Did right? you really? I did, and here's why. Because when I first started dating my wife, uh, her parents, I don't think really <laughs> like we could. She can't. We're not letting her date a lounge singer. I don't <laughs> think they really quite understood. I, there was nothing I did that validated that was validated to them. Yeah. So like you know, being a bar musician or making records, that wasn't really a thing because they had never heard of me. So they're like, "Have you ever thought about trying out for the American Idol?" <laughs> and and I was like, I just I fought it tooth and nail. I didn't want to do it. But then me and Steph decided, fuck it. We drove to Memphis, and my sister lives over in Memphis, so we just got to visit with her. And I, I walked in and tried it, and it's the most awkward situation. And the guy straight up told everyone. This is supposed to be good television. We're not right. looking for a good singer. We're looking no, for a star. And then he said, way. "He said, if you feel like getting angry and flipping a table over, do it. <laughs> if you feel like acting an ass, do it, is basically what he said. And I walked up, sang two lines of a song, and they were like, all right, thanks, next. And I uh, went back home. Because really? at the end yeah. of the day, you were a decent singer, so they couldn't make fun of you, and yet, for whatever reason, they didn't see... Uh, well, it was like they had that Daughtry cat already, and they, they I heard them saying, okay, here's what we're not looking for. We're not looking for any gray hairs, and we're not looking for any bald, bald rockers. <laughs> bald rockers is what they said. I was like, well, I guess I'll fall into bald rocker category. <laughs> tall, tall bald rocker, done now. <laughs> yeah. So you were uh, this you auditioned Daughtry's year, huh? I, I, the, the year after, I think. Oh, okay, mm. all right. Well, I was going to say, that there was a run there... And I've railed against reality TV a lot. I hate but that stuff. So there was much. I do too. I and I. Like, I'm I a fan <laughs> of fucking all of it. <laughs> I know, and and, and I, there are reasons that you enjoy it. I think the reasons why you enjoy it are some of the exact same reasons that Adam and I don't like it. And it, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that your job is like your job is, and our jobs are like our jobs are. Maybe, but um, my point is this: there was a run there. Where I really got into American Idol, and it was the the year Daughtry was on, and the couple of years after that, I still watched it. There was some serious talent there for one thing, but for whatever reason, they had also like perfected the formula. I think they had kind of caught lightning yeah. in a bottle. It was exactly the right mix of bullshit and actual uh, good like talent and the yeah the drama and everybody the right looks and all they hit all the right demographic targets or whatever. I, I think it's falling apart. The voice ratings continue to climb, though, so I, you're it's not alone. Decent, it's a decent model that they've got for that show. You know, I just don't like that whole thing. Though. I don't know, something weird about it. Something weird. Well, but Steven like, Tyler even said it. Like, this is not... I can't imagine a great album coming from any of those never. artists. I'm not saying that they aren't good artists, but... It's by the time they actually get to the point where they're making a record, there's so many hands in their artistry that it's no longer it yeah. has nothing to do with them. They're buying the songs from from other writers. They're you know buying a producer that pretty much tells them how to sing their songs. There's nothing about it genuine anymore. Like, yes, they don't write any of that material. Well, they're, they're karaoke. That's singers. bullshit. But even <laughs> if they do, even if they do, they've been in a in a coddled, mm. controlled position and environment for so long that the music is stale and false. I uh, Charlie Robinson is the the example that I use all the time uh, because I I know the story very well. His first album, Life of the Party. Okay, it's effectively he's on the road for ten years working on that album now he had a bunch of eps and and things that they pressed over the years but the first real album that was released once he finally got a record deal and was actually making money 
Life of the Party. And it was songs that he had worked on for a decade. Songs that were written in fucking vans and, and shitty buses and the back alleys yeah. and you, shitty places. If I'm in a back alley, I'm not writing a goddamn song. I, that's why you're not a fucking rock star <laughs> either, though. I'm doing I'm, coke, getting a blowjob, or robbing an old lady. <laughs> but like, in that order. <laughs> but like every song on that album is fucking gold, man. Every single one of, one of them, El, El Cerrito Places on that album, it's been recorded like four times since then. Kenny Chesney had a hit with it this this year, that dude's still making money off that album. Yeah, a good song is a good song. Yes, like, regardless. But, but that can't come from winning American Idol. You don't no. write the great song. What's really sad is if you go to like songwriters. Uh, I don't even know if it's what it's called. Songwriters Row, Songwriters Alley. I don't know. Over there in Nashville, they have so many different songwriters that I mean, they're not great performers. They don't sing really well. Maybe they're not the greatest guitar players. But these people are writing some of the greatest songs of our generation, and you will never even know it. You would never. You know, I bought Randy Travis's greatest hits, and he wrote two of those songs on his own greatest hits. Yeah. And, I mean, he's a songwriter. I mean, they do write songs. He's a hell of a musician, but a lot of those cats just don't write their own songs. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Some people are performers. Some people are songwriters. Yeah, but here's here's the deal. Like, when you write your own songs Mm -hmm. and you make an album, Every fucking shitty song gets on that album. The that's good true. ones do too, that's but true. the shit ones get on them. You gotta have you gotta have somebody on the outside. And see, that's been a problem with me lately. I don't I don't have I have no filter. I have no filter. I have nobody telling me no. Dude, send it to me. I'll tell you it's shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I that's mean, a true story. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, and, and what I end up doing is is uh, I feel like I keep covering the same ground with some songs. So then I'll try to do something different on this one song. So I have a whole record of songs that do not belong on the same record. That that's true. That yeah, is true. I, I have a just a big. Because I don't want to make the same song over and over. So and I they keep... don't even... So generally a title of, a, of an album yeah. kind of gives you the feel of that yeah. album? Nope. No. No, I don't do that. Yeah. I just put... I have... What I do is I collect songs, and I, I will sit and write songs for X amount of time, and then I'll pick songs. I'll say, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one, I just put them all on a record together. No through line. Nothing. Nope. None. That's what I like. I, yeah. So so let's get let's get into that a little specifically. Hey, can we do a word the word of the day before we get too far into this? I'm sorry. Yes. You do you want to do you do you have one or you want to use you, the you one had, that I had? Yeah. I mean, I don't know which one you had, but you said you had one. I did. As a matter of fact, I actually just pulled it up a minute ago. I mean, I could just be a dick and wait till like the end of the show and be like, "Oh, we're out of time." And you'd be like, "Well, had a word of the day." <laughs> <laughs> no good call. <laughs> Here's the uh, UrbanDictionary.com word of the day. Tell me why. Uh, and for uh, new listeners, the way that we do this is uh, we're going to give the word of the day and the definition, and then one of us is going to try to seamlessly work it into conversation. Uh, we'll not get any prizes for it because we don't have any fucking prizes, uh, but we'll all be mad the other one got it. Justice Boner. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. <laughs> I'm imagining Batman gets these constantly. I would imagine if I could just pick my name in my next life. <laughs> Justice Boner? <laughs> <laughs> or... Maybe, maybe if your last name was Boner, you would feel like that you had to become a a judge so that you could be, <laughs> oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Justice Boner. Justice Boner. Um, the feeling of excitement when exacting petty revenge or simply witnessing someone get what they deserve. Here's an example. Hey, did you hear about the Westboro Baptist Church picketing a soldier's funeral this weekend? No. What happened? The police formed a barrier around the cemetery and arrested the ones that tried to get in. Gave me a raging Justice Boner. You don't like that? No. <clears throat> Doesn't do it for you? Well, look up I, your own fucking word of the day. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I like it. I just don't like that justice and revenge go together, man. Mm. I just, mm. uh, yeah, Well, okay. Maybe maybe revenge is the wrong word to use It's like there. Gaddafi, Gaddafi was murdered. That's a, there's a justice a boner. Justice boner, exactly. Well, no, it can be something very simple, too. Like uh, somebody cuts you in line and then they trip over their shoes and break a the, leg. Yes, yeah. a or like boner. their credit card is denied at the counter. You know, like that fucking justice. See, I boner. never yeah. want to see. I never want to see other people. You know what I like seeing? I like seeing whenever there's that person that's driving behind you and they're driving like a madman. They're going all crazy. They're just trying to get ahead of you, but then you end up at the same stoplight as them, like right beside them, and you were just driving the normal speed limit. That gives me a justice boner. Did I do it? Did I do it right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. But, but that's different because we're kind of talking. We're about it. We're still talking about it. currently talking about it. Yeah. You got to wait until later on. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I yes, justice boner. That's our UrbanDictionary.com word of the day. Now nice. to go back to where I started. This is interesting for me because we're fifty. This will be the fifty-fifth episode of the show. And so far, we've had a bunch of guests on. None of them are actually very interesting in their own right. Uh, they're they're just, all I they're humorous friends. They're of ours. all interesting. I disagree. Well, yes, yeah. no, I love them all. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying they're just normal people. Today, so are we. 
we do have a motherfucking rock star in the studio, uh, though. Yeah, that's that's really. what I'm saying. Like, we've got a guy with an interesting job. We've got a guy that we already know our listeners like. And so I do feel like here, like, I, I want a little bit, not exactly like a regular interview type thing, but a little bit that way. So, like, where did it start? When did you know you wanted to, to be a musician? I've always known. I knew, yeah? Yeah. Um, we were going to Richardson Elementary, and I knew. Like, I, I've go always Go Roadrunners. Yeah, go Roadrunners. I've always known. I've always known that I've wanted to beep play beep. music. Yeah. And I probably started when I was about 14. I started taking guitar lessons. And then from then on, just kept playing. And and it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like whenever you're, you're 14, you start playing the guitar, and then you're trying to learn a bunch of Metallica solos. A bunch of my friends were doing that. But I was already writing songs. Right from the beginning. From so the it wasn't beginning. just like, oh, I want to play that lick that I like. Uh-huh. It was, no. did was, you have, like, was there was there a specific band that you listened to and you were always like, shit, I wish I could play like that? Uh, Black Sabbath. That was, yeah. really? Yeah, that was the one for me. Yeah, Black Sabbath. I liked the Smashing Pumpkins growing up. But, that's obvious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I went ball. <laughs> I love that. I love that. People are like, I'll say something about the Smash Pumpkins. We were like, yeah, I could see that you like them. What? I went bald. <laughs> My genetics dictated that I liked this particular musical group. No. Uh, it's like it's like when, when dog owners start looking like their dogs. <laughs> start listening listen to music that I look like or, or vice versa. Billy like. Corgan's just in your DNA now. <laughs> Billy Corgan's inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sometimes feel like there's a little Billy Corgan inside all of us. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I grew up listening to that kind of stuff. I like it. You know, Black Sabbath is probably my favorite. Um, did you find? Well, obviously, you weren't bald in high school. Were you popular yes, he in was. high school? <laughs> did did was you really? Not, you went bald early. To answer your questions in that order, I was bald. <laughs> I started going bald when I was about seventeen. Nice. Yeah. It's like, but he was nice. his, he was his current height at yeah. like twelve. Yeah, so I've, nobody could see it for a long yeah, time, right? <laughs> so I was about I was I was six feet in the sixth grade. Yeah, um, yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. man! Yeah, I got big. I well, see, that's boy. the problem. You you literally outpaced your hair. It's yeah. not that you went bald. It's so just I have that a whole it bunch found of, your chin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a whole bunch of hair in my in my skull. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So my, well, and don't you have you probably got a really hairy chest? I probably. have hairy everything. That's what I'm I am just about. I'm disgusting. See, it's just you you outpaced it. That's yep. all. It's a shame. It's a genetic terrible. I'm I'm saying I'm a that's monster, a uh, is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 a little bit, a little bit, a freakish, a freakish <laughs> musical making Sanctuary. <laughs> and uh, and no, I wasn't popular in high school. So uh, so was there any part of the? I always imagine high, you weren't popular in high school. No, the thing is with our high school, it wasn't a big enough high school to be like everybody knew everybody. So so the, I there guess weren't popular really clicks was but popular. You, we did have clicks. We did. We had clicks, but like, was popularity defined by how many people know you or how many people like you? Yeah, how many people like you? I would imagine. <clears throat> I don't think anybody hated me. Right. You know, I don't think anybody like. I mean, you certain people that you hung out with on. liked you. You know. And yeah. You, but yeah, I wasn't really picked on. I mean, no. we all hung around the tree, man. I mean, we hung out with the tree. <laughs> In tree huggers. Yeah, we just hang out with the tree. Children of the wood. The yeah. ghost um, <clears throat> So did you did you find when you picked up the music that it uh, in- increased your uh, popularity, especially with the ladies? I all for standing on the outside, I always imagined anybody that could play a guitar was going to just get laid immediately. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. I could never figure it out either. Why he didn't get laid more than he did? I didn't. Really? No. Even with the guitar? No. no. I think having the guitar is supposed to be like a confidence booster. That's what it is. <clears throat> it's not so much the guitar gets you laid. It's the confidence that you get from knowing that you can play the guitar. But I still had no confidence even when I was playing the guitar. I got you. Still very self-conscious playing the thing. You know, still am. Still so then it. you take it off, and the girl and the, and the girls are like, "I love it when you play." And you're like, <laughs> "You play, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, you sound so good when you play." Me and my boyfriend would really like to hang out with you sometime. <laughs> well, that's gross. That's a, that's a disgusting <laughs> thing you just said, ma'am. Here's the deal. And I had I had confidence, but could do nothing. Yeah, my boy over here, confidence Could, couldn't do shit. <laughs> he, was, he was pulling it down, man. Yeah, I I. Uh, I honestly, yeah, I never, I never partied like that when I was in high school. See, never. I'm with you. This, I, this guy is an anomaly. I don't understand. I don't understand where the confidence came from. I and I don't know. Look at this. This is a winner. <laughs> That's what winners look like. <laughs> Hope you're taking notes. <laughs> I, I have been. I've been recording this shit for a year now. Yeah. 
No, I. What, why do you think I started this podcast in the first place? I, and then I got married, so I guess it's working out for me. Yeah, you stole other guys' mojo. I did, indeed, yeah. man. I, I even got her knocked up, man. There's I'm plenty moving to go on, around. moving on down. Yeah, he I, made you more potent. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to tell him that secret. Um, uh, well, actually, you haven't heard it yet, but the secret to that is at the end of last week's podcast, actually. Oh, nice, You nice. listen to the after, the after the song bit, which, by the way, if you listen to this show and you don't listen all the way to the end, go back and listen to the last 55 fucking episodes. There's a joke it's like a, every week. It's like a whole new podcast they get to listen to. I, Honey Bun asked me the other day. It's she's the secret like, podcast. Do you, do you think everybody knows that those jokes are there? And I was like, I... You know, it had never occurred to me. Well, if they don't think the show's funny, they don't think there's jokes anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, jokes. I'm assuming, I'm assuming those people don't download very many episodes, though, you know? All right. So, uh, speaking of, though, we, we were talking about uh, the ladies. You are now married. I am, absolutely. And how long you been? Uh, how long you guys been together? Coming up on, well, we've been together for, <clears throat> man, it's coming up on seven years. But, wow. but we, we've been married for uh, almost two years. It'll be two years in November. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I, how does she like? How does she deal with you on the road and stuff? How does she deal with you singing to pretty girls all the time? Because she knows he's not good with the ladies. <laughs> yeah, she knows I have no game. She knows I have no game. Um, <laughs> uh, she, uh, there's no danger. No, there's, there's no, no danger. danger. No, she, uh, no, she's just a good person trustworthy wife i mean she you know and as far as me playing on the weekends you know she she knows it makes me happy to you know get out of town and, and play um she's like he's got to get away from me every yeah it gives every her a seven break. days or we're gonna get divorced <laughs> nice get yeah, that she, motherfucker out the house <laughs> yeah <laughs> that dude's just sitting there playing video games <laughs> eating fucking cheetos i'm sick of seeing him <laughs> ball she's in i married a rock star <laughs> <laughs> yeah now there's this now there's this what happened now, um, she she uh, she works on the weekend. She's in the medical field, so she actually works weekend nights a lot of times. So I'm already out of town. She's a rock star too. She's, she's, a rock star she's too. got those hours as well. Well, yeah. there you go. And she's pregnant. We we are six months pregnant. Whoa, yep. man! Congratulations. Yep. Almost seven months. Almost seven I months. I fucking hate everybody. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're gonna have uh, a girl, and I'm terrified. You're talking about so she's gonna be. We're, t- we're talking like the middle of August then? Yes. The first of August yep, or something? Middle, yeah, Ooh, middle of right August. Right in the middle of the heat, dude. Yeah, we, we tried to plan it to where we we, <laughs> we could have it during the winter, but then, <laughs> you can't <laughs> plan so some much. shit like that. No, that's, a, that's You're the telling me. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. been planning for a fucking year. <laughs> That's because Joel, Joel's joel been stealing all your mojo. That's a true story. That's a true story. That's what these microphones are for. <laughs> nice. It's like, the fucking, it's like the fucking dark crystal. <laughs> like you're taking all the little pod people and sucking them dry through their eyes. Oh, I right. love it. That's right, man. You've let out the secret. Uh, you can you can allow yourself to be hooked further into the system by um, calling us, too, on our uh, voicemail. I want to get in a plug here real quick. Um, ring us up and leave us a voicemail. Uh, we've got a phone number now. It's 504-613-5635, and you can be part of the show. 504-613-5635. Here's a little warning. If you uh, leave us a voicemail or a text message, you might be used on the show. That's just a little legal ease there. Um, email us to twoguysonepod at me.com, and don't forget about our Facebook page, facebook.com slash twoguysonepod. There you go. Um, Why did you just tick mark your name on a cup? I don't know. I, I doodle sometimes. No, but it's not a doodle. Like it's like a it's like a hash it's like a little slash mark under your name and I'm just wondering if you're playing a game secretly and keeping score <laughs> and I don't know the fucking rules. <laughs> See, now you got two. Other guy has zero. <laughs> <laughs> Going you know back to the whole give Adam one. Please, please. Going back to the whole one. sucking everybody's mojo out through their... Yes. I, I, I had through the their, vision of the movie The Ring. <laughs> People get done listening to the podcast and they just <laughs> a dried husk of a person. <laughs> well, we suck their life away 55 minutes at a time. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> two guys, one pod.com, free funny every Sunday. Um, let your life be sucked away one hour at a time. Um, hey, I've got a best. Let's do, uh, let's do the best. Thank God. We haven't done a best in a couple episodes. <laughs> Ooh, what's the best? You're the best. The best of a certain category because we're too fucking lazy 
to make to a give list. you a list. Yeah, pretty and much. We're too lazy for a top five or bottom five or whatever. So we're just like, yeah, we'll just talk about the best. <laughs> the best of the best. Now, uh, since you were in this week, I thought about doing a, a music related one, but I, d- I don't think so. I, th- I think this one is better, and I really want to get your take on it, too. It's one that I've been wanting to do for several weeks, and it just hasn't come up. The best animated mom. Oh, goodness. How do you rank her? First oh, of all, obviously, right on top. You gotta you gotta have milf factor, right? Yeah, absolutely. But but then also you want dry wit, you want a, a loving, caring mother for her children. You want a why nice would you want a milf factor for uh, the father? But you're watching the show. You want some eye candy to look at. Yeah, but if it's my mom, like I'm putting myself in the show, like I'm her kid. I don't want to. No, 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 mom. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not talking about to replace your mother. I'm saying who is the best animated mom? We're talking about watching the show. You don't believe in a world where cartoons are real, sir. You're the only one in this room look, that doesn't want that's to. That's a true story. Look, yeah. That's a fucking dumb universe. I was listening to that episode and I was thinking it. And in my mind, you said, what universe would you want to live in? And I'm sitting there thinking, Roger Rabbit. Fuck the yeah. The whole way. The whole way. I would love to have a, a cartoon hole I could just throw against the wall and end up somewhere else. Yes. Teleport. It's like, you know, Yeah, portal. but to get that, to get that, do you realize what you have to put up with? It would be calamity. You would end up with some weird shit happening in your house. But I mean, it would be a little a interesting. A fucking cartoon mallet that when you are, instead of instead of blowing a raspberry or, or, or saying something cutting to you, when you do something stupid, I could just smack you on the head with a cartoon mallet that wouldn't hurt, but would burn, burn, you know, or whatever. That would be fucking awesome. No. It would be yeah. awesome. It would only make your life worse. Only. <laughs> All right. So, in, so, so, but with that in mind, then you don't need to worry about living in the world of the cartoon mom. You just need to worry about watching the cartoon mom. So, Mill Factor has to be included. That's why, like, to me, like, Wilma's got to run w- right to the top of the list. At least I'm not saying necessarily that she's my pick, but Wilma's got to be up there because she is fucking hot. There's no doubt about it. The red hair up tight with the fucking bone in it and the pearls around. Oh, yes. So yes, you like sir. so you like to keep your women in the cave. In the I cave, do right? like to okay. keep my women in the cave. That's barefoot, a true story. Barefoot. That's a true story. Really? I, I think though, <laughs> I think I've got to go with and I, and the, and the name escapes me right now. The mom from Family Guy. Her her name is Lois. Uh, Lois. Yes, Lois. That Yankee about accent it, gets know? me, man. I like really. The, yeah, I like it. It's Something a little dirty about her. It's harsh. It's a little Edith Bunker, but not stupid. You know. Mm. She's a great mom, first of all. She deals with a kid who is literally trying to kill her and yet has not only avoided death but also is continuing to raise her family. Then that, her don't husband, you think that makes her look, – look, look at that bitch's life. <laughs> Seriously, look at that bitch. Do you think she's winning? <laughs> yeah, she yeah. ain't fucking winning. Hell and the reason yeah, she ain't winning is because she's goddamn dumb enough to stay in that situation. To, to stay married to PETA. Um, let me tell you this though. She yeah, and she live with a baby Peter. that tries to kill her. She, and <laughs> listen with a fu- and have to deal with a fucking dumbass son. Yeah, and a talking dog. Yeah, something's wrong with that son. That's a true story. A dog that that we know for a motherfucking fact harbors sexual feelings for her. Like has multiple times let it be known yeah, he would like to be the husband. What a fucked up bitch she's got to be to stay there. <laughs> That's a little yeah, okay. You, you're making a good point. That is. A she's good a freak point. in the bed though, dude. Safe the safety word is banana. That's all. They're cartoons. Say. They're all freaks in the bed. You just gotta draw them that way. Yeah. Well, see, no, no, not in your universe. That's right. <laughs> I think we've got a loophole here. Because that was a Jessica Rabbit line. That's another point for Adam. <laughs> In my I got fucking game. points on that cup. <laughs> no points. No points for other guy. <laughs> if that's how you have to win. Uh, so, so I think I'm going to go with Lois. With, with uh, Lois from Family Guy. Oh, yeah, she's my man. best animated mom. God, this is a toughie. It is. There's a lot of good ones out there. Judy Jetson, yeah. of course. I'm trying to think of some non-human mothers, though. Hmm. Dude, oh, I'm taking I'm, dude, I'm taking the mom off of fucking the the Herculoids. Oh, I don't know. Uh, the don't the know. Herculoids was the one like it was the dad that was effectively Hercules, but they couldn't call him Hercules. Uh, there was the mom, the two kids, but then there was also the, the goo, gigantic the stone rock, like the, the yeah, giant yeah. stone gorilla, the uh, the pterodactyl that shot like pellets yeah. out of its thing or something, and uh, the rhinoceros its... that shot things. Out of yes, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a bad Hanna Barbera rip off. Yeah, of like yeah. Conan the Barbarian, or like He Man, really. Yeah. Well, but way before He Man. That's yeah. Fifteen twenty years before He Man. The mom from Herculoids. Yeah, huh? man. she was pretty hot. Could hold her own in a battle. Dude, that's a survivor. Dude, she's like a fucking cave woman. Hmm. So if, if I need some shit done, lands. yeah, anything like, like if if I got if that chick, if I'm hanging out with that chick, and the zombie apocalypse happened, I'm not worried about it. 
Uh, that's true. I'll say this. The Herculoids never, ever had a bathroom that I saw, uh, which probably means that chick is stinky and hairy in places that I don't want to uh, to go. Uh, She's drawn to smell wonderful. <laughs> She's drawn to smell wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there are no hair follicles and uh, there are no... Um, Armpits, actually. Yeah, Just nobody drawn has without armpits. And then, well, I thought you, you remember the dinosaurs. Hole. You remember the dinosaurs. I don't know if that counts or not. Ah, oh, the imagine, mom from the like, dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she mm-hmm. was a pretty good. I, I, it's not animated, but you know what? I've consulted the judges, and I'm going to allow it. Dude, you, that's a lot fact, like for bringing up the dinosaurs. I'm going to give you a point. Yes, <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of that dynamic is a lot like uh, Family Guy. Uh, it's very similar to Family Guy. I think Except it the kid a lot wants to, to kill the dad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Not the mama. Not the mama. I've got to go with um, tried and true. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Marge Simpson. Marge Simpson. Marge Simpson. The hell that that woman has had to put up with for 20 plus years. That's a true story. That's, That's kind of in the same boat, though. It's the same people. Now that we're thinking about it, this is the same show. Over re-written. and over since Hanna Barbera. How have yes. we not caught on? <laughs> Breaking news! All these, <laughs> all these animators are like, ah, we'll just do this scene over again. You have been <laughs> duped. <laughs> uh, don't make her a cave person and give her, uh, give her blue hair. They just repackage the same thing over and over. Um, I well, then, then surely, if uh, if we showed you the um, the episode of South Park where they just proclaimed that the Simpsons did it already, that would give you a justice yeah. boner because you, you realize that ah. they had uh, explained away your little problem in television. That's right, I stole it! I stole it! And the streak I, is broken. Yeah, I'm a fuck up. Uh, that's not true. Uh, the Littlest <laughs> Sensei was on the last time and did not win. I think you stole it day. from him, too. Maybe I did. Maybe I'm so on a streak you have a new streak. Now. Yeah, there's a new streak. Did you get a point for the streak? I get a point for the streak. <laughs> that's right. I like that we're, you're right. over there playing a game with the tick marks that nobody else is giving <laughs> the rules. Like you can just change it. At once. That's that's what happens when it's you like around sit behind the, horn. the microphone and the uh, and the desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's it's like around the horn, but not at all in any way. And you know what? You're getting your point taken away for being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like around the horn, but it's nothing like. <laughs> That's good, man. That was good. Um, did you have a man scouting this week? I do. I do. Watches. We ain't got no vouchers. We don't need no vouchers. I don't have to show you any stinking vouchers. So the Man Scout badge this week. Uh, speaking of the little sensei, uh, I went up to Cherokee and saw the show that he was uh, working on. Uh, yeah, how was it? Last week. It was outdoor theater, man. Uh, yeah, we we talked about it. If you've never been to an outdoor drama, um, really, if there's one in your area, you should totally go and see it. It's awesome. You should support these things. They're dying out all across the country, and it's a shame. Um, generally, they're very broadly written. Yes. Uh, very broadly acted. Very biased. Uh, yes, towards whatever local yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Aboriginal group <laughs> is is uh, historically um, connected to that area. Uh, and... You know, they're a lot of fun. They're acted by young kids, and it's so much fun. The experience of these things behind the scene, it's a lot of work. First off, they pay you very little, but it's uh, for a lot of the actors, their first taste of professional life and their first taste of freedom from parents and, and a long way from home, et cetera, et cetera. And so there's this real... It's just fucking awesome, man. It's like summer camp for adults is what we called it when I was there. And that comes across in the performing. So if you ever get a chance to see one of these, there's a reason why people fall in love with them. Here's what's, here's what's weird, man. So, like, in in that kind of world where you're having to act that, like, there's conventions that just have to happen. Like, it has to be so overacted and so large, unnaturally large movements that you're doing. Because when people are sitting a fucking 100 yards away, 50 feet in the air, they can't tell who's talking unless there's movement involved. Yes. So I think that that is part of it. And if you're just watching it or whatever, it's terrible, <laughs> right? Like if you're watching on video or whatever, you're like, man, that's such a dumb fucking movement. Why would they be that big or that up? Because you have to act for the back row, right? Yes. I was just thinking about this. You don't have to do that in music. Like if you're playing a large area or a large, uh, say if you're playing an arena or something, uh, People are there for your voice, man. They don't like if they can't see you. They the, the experience is still all right. Yeah, it's not. It's it's a little different. If you're playing like a small club and nobody is there to see you though, and you're playing something you wrote, and you just basically become a pee break for everybody to just <laughs> go go to the bathroom or or 
or, you know, I don't know, to, to go buy a drink or something. And uh, people will talk over your entire set until you play, like, something by Tom Petty or... Play some Scanner. Joker. Brown-Eyed Girl. Yeah, oh, Brown-Eyed Girl every time. Every time. This is my song. Is he my wrote... Song. Van, what's his face? He wrote this for me. Brown-Eyed <sighs> Girl is for me. It was uh, my favorite DJ. He used to play this all the time. He told me... It was about it was about you me. Wanna, you want to hear the level of frustration? I played at a bar the other night. Not to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, no, no I want to hear this. Gentle. So I'm we interrupt this, each other all the fucking time. I'm playing at this club, and uh, I show up, and there's a DJ there. I won't put the DJ's name out, but uh, and I'm I'm throwing up air quotations. DJ. Yes. Um, He's playing it off an iPod. There was a laptop computer with his iTunes playlist pulled up, and then up in the next window, Facebook. Nice. <laughs> and he just hits play on his his song, and there were people in the club, and they were dancing. They were doing their thing, dancing to this music that he had nothing to do in creating. And I was to play after him, and I'm setting my stuff up, and I'm watching him play on Facebook while the song plays. And then he got done, and I started playing. I have never cleared a room out quicker. They would rather listen. They would rather listen to a guy pretending to do something with a song that he had nothing to do with. You, you didn't, probably didn't even buy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He probably, that's the deal. He's just a guy that's got a hard drive full of music. Let's yeah, be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. You're a guy that possesses music that somebody else wrote. Yeah. That's frustrating. That's, yeah. So anyway, I, back to I've what you're always, saying. I've always you know, said. Uh, you know, uh, a friend of ours used to DJ uh, back in high school. Yes. Yeah. Bought, bought the equipment from him. And he would DJ like local dances and stuff. But here's the thing is, this was... This was CD. This is where whenever CDs were being used, and we'd have to take the CD out and, and put it in. And you'd have the two decks. You yeah. Would have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd have to lower it and 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 uh, make this one higher as it as it as it came in. Uh, you don't even have to do that anymore. No, just build a playlist and hit yeah. play. Set an automatic crossfade and yeah, and like that I, was easy money. It. Mm-hmm. it still is. I mean, like, like now. I mean, okay. From here on out, y'all. I'm I've I'm, I've I've got a new calling. I'm DJ Dale. DJ, DJ Dale, everyone. DJ, DJ I've got Dale. A hell, I've got a hell of an iTunes playlist. I'm, I'll play your wedding. All you, all you say the rest of the time is just cliches. Like the whole rest of the episodes, all you do is say cliches. Uh, you, you know it would be awesome. Damned though. if you do, you, damned if you don't. You, you turn, you turn into DJ Dale, but then you just drop in some Adam Dale songs once in a while in the middle of the playlist. Yeah, to see if, if I want to empty the room out. Well, no, I'm saying play. you play, you play the best ones, and if you played them like they were somebody else's, they'd be like, "I love this song. This, this is, is my, my jam. Favorite. This is my favorite. This guy wrote this for me. I don't know if you know that DJ Dale, but he oh, wrote this for me. DJ Dale. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, we were talking we were about discussing we were talking our about friend in Cherokee, though, an outdoor drama. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're going to do a mascot movie. badge. Yes. Yep. I completely fucking forgot. You, uh, you and uh, Mrs. One Guy went out of town, took a little uh, vacation there, saw some friends, did some some camping. No, but me and Mrs. Other Guy show did. Oh, me, yeah, no, you didn't go with Mrs. One Guy. That would be weird, wouldn't it? No. <laughs> Right. You did not take my pregnant, uh, uh, newly married wife off on vacation. I really appreciate you not <laughs> yeah, doing that, yeah. by the way. Um, <laughs> Point for you. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the right wife. <laughs> so we, uh, so we, we got to hang out after the show. And we talked about all, I can't remember all the stuff that we talked about. But uh, we were in the mountains, and I couldn't, you know, I didn't even know he sent me a text message. But once I got out of the mountains... He sent me a text message that says, we're man- I can't, hold on, I can't even fucking remember what the text yeah. message says. But it sent you, it was like, hey, we talked about this Man Scout badge, do it. So I'm going to I'm gonna use it. Excellent. Oh, hey, it's a two-parter. Sweet. Fantastic. So, uh, by the way, uh, just as a little refresher for our, old, uh, for our new listeners uh, or listeners who haven't heard Man Scouting in a while, the way Man Scouting works, it's just like Boy Scouting. You're going to get badges that would adorn right. your, sh- your sash, as it your were. Your man sash. That's right. Uh, and uh, unlike Boy Scouting, they're often a little dirty. They're a little tweaked up. They're a little manned up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for boys. Not for boys. These are, these badges are not for boys. Um, so the camouflage badge. All right. All right. So if you're a Boy Scout, you get a camouflage badge. Like You can build like a duck blind or make yourself like this little ghillie suit. You know, different things to get the camouflage badge. Right. A Man Scout badge is whenever... You know you're going to do something that your wife doesn't like. You may even have been forbidden to do it. But you camouflage your night in such a way that it never comes up. So, like, if you go to the strip club, right, 
because mm-hmm. it's your boy's birthday or whatever, and you know your wife's not going to be too happy about it. Right. And you're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go to the bar, have a couple of drinks, yada, yada, yada. But, you you know, you'll end up at the strip club. Uh, and you get, like, titty glitter on you. <laughs> Titty glitter. Right. So does it that is, come out of the titty? <laughs> it is a special breast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, if bras. you ever go to the strip club, like, their legs are normal color. Once you make it to their titties, they are shiny as shit because they're covered in titty glitter. And can they go, whenever they're getting their breast augmentation, can they actually go in and request that it sprays glitter? <laughs> <laughs> make my job so much easier. Um, I want the tits that spray glitter. <laughs> but, you know, that shit gets on you and glitter's hard to come off. Oh, yeah. Right? It's a true story. <laughs> So, like, you plan it out. Like, you got to change your clothes in the car. You're going to help your buddy shower. You're going to run a comb through your beard because titty <laughs> right. glitter is a motherfucker to get out of a yeah, beard. How do you get titty glitter in his beard? It's the voice of, it's the voice of experience right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> From motorboat, and that's how, you get, <laughs> yeah. that's how you get titty glitter in your beard. <laughs> so, you're all ready for that. Or, like, you're not supposed to go out with your boys. Right. Right? But you go out and have a couple of drinks. Maybe you're not supposed to be drinking. So, like, you keep mouthwash in the car. Or th- this is the most common one. You don't smoke anymore. You don't smoke cigarettes anymore. And you got the buddy that smokes. And so whenever you get around with your college buddies, all of a sudden you're bumming cigarettes all mm-hmm. night. And then you got to drink a bottle of mouthwash before right, you get Right, right, right. So you're getting your camouflage badge. Yes. Whenever you're doing something that, that you know, the missus may not like, you, uh, you, know, you can camouflage it. And you it. successfully camouflage it. That's yeah, when you can win that badge. That's when you get that badge. Um, and then the other part of this is... We started talking about like 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 we did. What the fuck is the purpose of titty glitter? Here it is. <laughs> Strippers are also girlfriends, girlfriends, yep, absolutely, wives and daughters. Absolutely. They want to make money off of you, but they don't give a fuck if you get in trouble. So the wives and the strippers have formed a coalition. <laughs> Oh, big glitter. Big to, glitter. That's big exactly glitter. what yeah. it is. So the wives are like, hey, look, I know you're trying to make a buck. I get it. I don't want you to make it off my husband. Put on something to wear. Like, if he goes out, I'll fucking know he was at the strip club. It's like So they you, put on goddamn titty glitter. It's like when you rob a bank and they have that pouch that explodes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is marks ex- the money. Okay. That's exactly what titty glitter is. <laughs> you are a marked man. You All are right. a marked man. I'm I'm going to I'm going to go I'm going to go uh, out on a limb here and say we we could prove this very easily. All we have to do is trace back and see if the if the uh, profits of big glitter go to fund, you know, parental organizations and safe playgrounds yes. in inner cities and uh That's you know true. uh um, um battered wives shelters and things like that. You know what it is. There you go. There's a reason glitter is the herpes of the craft world. <laughs> so then in in a, in a weird in a weird way the the stripper community are huge humanitarians. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, so we're doing God's work. They're yes, feminists they are. by giving them dollar bills. Absolutely, yeah. you're funding you're funding uh, the frontline feminism. I well, think is really what that's about. I think we've just justified something great here today. Other guy for that, you're going to get two points. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, gentlemen. I believe uh, our our time here has uh, come to a close. It's uh, rather warm in here. Before we get you out of the studio, though, and we're going to have you back again soon. I'm so glad you found some time oh, to come too. hang out with it's us. A blast. But um, what's what's next for you? You've uh, I've mentioned that you are on iTunes. You're on YouTube too. You've got. Is there a website people should go to no, in I, particular? I'm the worst person when it comes for to like self promotion. Self promotion. I'm awful at it. Uh, marketing you, himself. Which well, is why he's still playing in bars. And yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I still got shitty jobs in bars. Yeah, when I get, I feel dirty if I'm out there just like really. Uh, sometimes I'll even play shows, and not even bring in merchandise. <laughs> I feel I feel weird. I'll be like, can I buy a CD? You're like, uh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, in the it's car. iTunes. Yeah, I tell them they're in the car. I can go grab you one. And then they leave before yeah. I even get back in. I guess they changed their mind. They have buyer's remorse. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker didn't even walk around with one. That's like uh, terrible. No. Impulse buys. You know, I'm just going to continue to keep writing and, uh, you know, recording music. and Excellent. Yeah. Well, we're big fans, obviously. Well, and we've, we've got you linked to Helen back on the, the website. And uh, we're going to feature another song this week. I'm, you know what? I'm not like, like I've thought about this. Adam Dell is like... Um, it's a lot like pussy for me, right? <laughs> I like where this is going. So back in the di- so back in the day, like there's a rule, like you don't. Are you are you about to come out? <laughs> no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, so that would not surprise me. So back not with you, but I like how like where we're from. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Uh, so, like back in the day when I was single and yes. I was whoring around, 
if it was I used to fuck Adam. <laughs> if, no, no. If pussy was over an hour away, I wasn't fucking going to get it. Mm-hmm. Right. I do okay. understand that. I so do. like Adam for me, like I love him, but if it's more an hour away, I'm not gonna go fucking see him. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I mean, you honestly have to bring the show to people. Like you can't expect some people to go out of their way to go watch you. You can if you search though on iTunes for Adam Dale, you're gonna find a, a ton of great stuff. You can listen to him on Spotify too if you use that. You can listen to it absolutely free there. But he he gets a few shekels some way down do. the down the line there. Uh, and YouTube too, check him out there. Great videos. You can see some live performances as well. And we will have you on again soon. Uh, any idea when the when the next album might come out? No, I've actually started writing for it right now. Um, but you know, my position isn't such that I can do very good recording right now. You know? I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm living. Me and my wife are building a house, but right now we're living with her parents. It's, nice. It, it's not. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I like how the show is not going to die. Like he no. keeps he keeps like saying a line, and then be like, "Oh, but I have another question." Like you got like I had these questions, guys. I, I got to uh, ask before we get off the air. No, I've, I've, I, th- I no, edit I'm, and I find the good and I put it all together. Don't make fun of me and well, stop the flow. I'm he done. was he was talking about the struggles of a young artist, sir. <laughs> well, anyway, we're 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 pretty much confined to a bedroom right now, and I can't do a whole lot of tracking and recording. I do a lot of my own recording, and yeah. so I don't you know I, I don't have the space required to be able to do it. But I'm writing music for it currently. Well, excellent. So well, is the house going to have a studio, like a built-in studio? It is. It nice. Is. Yeah, we're going to have a special room for it. My wife actually made sure of it. She was like, I definitely want you to have your own space so you can get out of mine. A, a good wife <laughs> yes. will do that. She didn't say that, but that's kind of <laughs> how it came across. That's where it was. For my sanity, I need you to have your own space. She's nice. like, no, baby, you're just, you're just so good to me. I want you to have your own studio, yeah. like a place that can be yours. You can you can feel free. Your songs Stay are there so as good. long as you want. Yeah, your songs are so good. I love hearing your songs, but... If I hear them too much, they lose their magic. <laughs> Has she ever said that? No. Oh. <laughs> hide, hide it under a bushel just once or twice. <laughs> just, just, hide your light under a bushel. <laughs> just every now and again. Just sometimes. So I can see how bright that's it how, That's how he times. gets laid. She's like, she's like, I'm tired of fucking listening to you. Come will, fuck I'll, me. I'll fuck you if you shut up. <laughs> put down that guitar, please, God. <laughs> just shut up and pregnant. come put your dick in my mouth. That's, that's, how she got, that's how she got pregnant. She wanted me to stop playing the guitar. Just, I swear to God, if you stop playing that guitar. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let me tell I you something. I start playing the guitar. Let me tell you something. When <laughs> gets famous, I feel really good about your chances, and and I hope that you drag us along with you. So. Hey, man, we're breaking hey, the news all the way right to the, here. That's right. All the hey, way to the top. So that's true. Because when does that come out? I don't know. When I don't, it, know. It, I don't even should, know if it's going to air. I really don't know anything about it. Sometime in the future. Wait. She, yeah. So she so she made it onto the show, or she made it to the auditions. I don't know all the all the details. I know she went through the first audition. She made it. And then she went to the second audition, apparently made that too. And then now she gets to play with the full band in front of an audience. So they're apparently going to film it. Nice. I just don't really? know if they're going to air it. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I mean, if you're playing in front of a band with a full audience on The Voice, that's like you. I think they're filming. I think they're going to Like air you made it. it onto a team. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how it works. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying she's good or bad one way or the other. I'm just saying this is not something she did as a life goal. I set out from the time I was probably like 16 to be a musician. And she just decided two like months she, ago this is what she, she wanted. She to do. invalidates you even less. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. It's invalidation. She's like, this shit ain't hard. Watch. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> I got this. Uh, my my wife doesn't listen to my podcast anymore. I feel invalidated. Oh god. Well, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, my know? wife. No, she. It was literally what you were saying with your wife. She's like, I love to hear you talk, but if I hear it too much, it loses its specialness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought because she's done it at bunch of she's like, I've done it. It's not that cool anymore. <laughs> like I've, I've I've done a podcast. Oh, you have a podcast. I've been on one. Yeah. The magic it, yeah. seal has been broken. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't understand. Yeah. She saw behind the curtain. Once you see behind the curtain and you see all the little wheels and, and pulleys I've got back here, it is a lot less magical. Uh, That's true. At my house, it's more like once you've seen under the sheets. <laughs> With a UV light? Yeah. like No, <laughs> no like uh, like for Mrs. Other Guy to get her in the mood, I just cover up. <laughs> like I turn off the light. She's like, oh, baby, you feel so lumpy. I'm like, pay no attention to the man on the cover. <laughs> pay no attention to the man. I'm like, watch that Brad Pitt movie. <laughs> yeah, watch the Brad Pitt movie. <laughs> Magic Mike, baby. Magic Mike yeah. all, all yeah. the way. Yeah. Channing Tatum, take us home. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, all right, until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And you have been Adam Dale. And this has been the podcast. <laughs> Soon I won't know my way around The landmarks keep
navigating, I sometimes draw a blank. But I keep in mind that everything has to change. One day I wake up in the fool's golden. Of TV stations, satellites that hear every word I say. The world pokes holes in my personal bubble, and we're poking holes in the bottom of the sea. It's like everything. You've done podcasts before, right? Yeah, like tons of them. I have my own. Really? No, not at all. I I, I've done. Say. I've done one <laughs> podcast before. I'd feel really bad if you had your own podcast <laughs> no. and I hadn't listened to it. 